What about me? Aren't I going to be a surprise element? He says, no, you're just going to be a plain element. Thank you. No? I do. Okay, Mr. Larson. Can they hear you? They can hear it fine. Oh. Excuse me. We must have level. I'm all for level. Are Come you all for level? level? Yes, we must have level. Uh, <laughs> is the magic eye leveling off? Yes, ma'am. Uh, how's it leveling off for you? Well, you see, we have one um, a very studied speaker, and we have very unstudied speaker here, and then I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> 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 Well, I think it went out later. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> now, are your parents alive? Uh, are my parents yeah. alive? Yes. My mother and dad both are alive. And well, I'm very happy to say. And uh, they are non-professional. In fact, uh, even though you didn't ask, so many people do, they want to know if I come from a theatrical family. I do not. In the history of my entire family, from the stem up on my tree, there has never been anybody that's ever done anything publicly other than just make a fool of themselves. <laughs> and it was not for money. I'm just getting money for mine. <laughs> <laughs> you have two brothers. What, what are they doing? No, I, no, I, I'm an only child. <laughs> no, I just recorded that. <laughs> that was rinsing. Tin. Oh. Everything right. <laughs> You see, Richard Watkins knows me better than you. <laughs> well, you can't know everything, can you, Richard? Are you really serious in Yes. Mm. I've led a lonely life. <laughs> <laughs> what was your very first recording? And I have an only child. She's also very lonely. <laughs> and she over there, she can't, I can't even find her. She's so crowded with people. <laughs> Tell them about brown sugar in your porridge. You're never. <laughs> never. <laughs> what was your very first record? I know that you uh, uh, sang with Charlie Barnett. Mm -hmm. Yes, what? what the one you know? uh, no, actually, if you want to, if you can think back this far, uh, the very first one I did when I was 17 years old, and I filled in for Marion Hutton with the Glenn Miller Band, and I did um, Baby Me and Love with a Wait, Capital U. And they were really written for Marion Hutton, and she sang about two tones higher than I did, and um, I had to reach for the note. And they finally, it got so funny that the boys in the band put an apple box there, and they said, here, step on this when you have to reach for the note. <laughs> and it really didn't sound, uh, the feeling was there, but today when I hear this, this recording played for me, it's... I'm not really embarrassed with it, but it's the oddest sounding thing I've ever heard in my life, <laughs> truthfully speaking. But that was the very first one, but uh, that was quite by chance. The one that I made and aiming at things in general was um, with a jazz group. Uh, do you recall the international jazz albums? They had, um, yes, uh, it was um, one, two, three, four, five, I think there were about six Matt volumes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Matt, well, to tell you the truth, when I walked in the studio, they called me first and they said, uh, are you going to be free tomorrow afternoon? And I said, well, sure. You know, and they said, well, do you want to record? I said, wonderful. We'll be there at a certain time. And I walked in the studio. I, just, I really didn't know what to expect, but it certainly was nothing like what confronted me when I walked in the studio. It was like walking into heaven and seeing everybody that you'd ever read about in your entire life all the great uh, for music, I walked in and I was staring at them and they were staring back at me. And really, it, I just got to heaven a little before my time. Uh, it was Coleman Hawkins and uh, John Kirby, uh, Nat Cole. Uh, I could go on infinitum. It was just... Uh, I can't was Joe Venuti was that bottle? No, Joe Venuti was uh, when I he was the one that started me out in show business actually. But uh, it's very likely that he was. I've just never seen so many celebrities in my whole life. I had read about all these people, but I've never ever Red seen scared. them. 
I was so frightened that I couldn't remember not only the words, but I couldn't remember the melody to <laughs> what they consider uh, as um, just being standard songs. I'd sung them all my life. But every time that, um, oh, Nat Cole would play something on the piano, I would turn around and listen to him and I'd forget what I was singing, <laughs> you know. Uh, Coleman Hawkins would play something on the saxophone and I'd, I'd forget again, you know. It was just a series of forgetting. And um, didn't start me a new style, you understand. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it was my very first recording date for Capitol Records. I was not under contract to him, but I just loved it. You like that recording for better or worse. I think it was one of your best, really. It didn't get anywhere. But... Must have been a reason. <laughs> <It's not laughs> a I, uh, yes. Uh, for better or worse was from the um, was from the television play that. Uh, Mr. Stanley, who is my business partner and myself, own, called The Lord Don't Play Favorites. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were a series of very good songs from that show, um, for better or worse. There was another one called um, uh, The Things I Never Had, which had to do with a house with big old shade trees and a doll that was called yeah. so-and-so. And I just never had all these things. It was really a wonderful song. There were a lot of marvelous songs in this particular score. and. There is some kind of conversation, it's certainly very light, I think Richard was in on some of it, about bringing over this play and producing it over here. It's an hour long, when we did it in the state, we had um, uh, uh, Bob, who was doing the uh, Untouchables now? Yeah. Bob Stack, and he was my leading man, and we had Buster Keaton who played the part of the clown, and Louis Armstrong, was our band leader of our little circus band. <laughs> and then we had uh, a whole bunch of other people that were very talented, and we thought it might be very wonderful to bring the show over here and either do it in one of the theaters or to just film it and put it on your TV. I don't know enough about your TV to know whether, does this kind of a show do well, uh, Richard? Well, I'm not quite not. clear about what, exactly what kind of it's show It's kind of a musical. Well, I think it's kind of a musical with a story involved. Uh, about a girl owning a circus and uh, um, so many times it's not really the story that's so important as the people who are playing the well, characters. Well, I think it would be a bit new over here. I don't know whether it would do well or anything. I just think it would be oh. something very fresh and new. You can't guarantee success. You know, I wouldn't know whether it would yeah. do well. But well, I think it would be new to us, don't you? I mean, yeah, that yeah, type yeah, of thing. Yeah. I don't think we have it here. Do you <laughs> think they're ready for it? I, I don't want to blaze any trails that I can't. <laughs> Listen, I don't know. Do you mean in the theater or, or in television? Either, either. Mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, you have all the plays, like My Fair Lady and all those things. It would Come seem to me your country, dear, not from mine. That, I <laughs> we merely wrote the book. That was even came ah. from Ireland. So <laughs> I was going to say, how can you say that? It should have come from here. <laughs> <laughs> the Pied Piper. Yes, well, this oh, again... this I've been promised to see you when you next come back to this country. Yes, well, yes. now, it's the same sort of thing, except one is a fairy tale, and uh, on the premise of, uh, of um, any of the Anderson fairy tales or Grimm's fairy tales or anything like that, but now, the one we were speaking of before is would be considered a modern fairy tale mm -hmm. uh, with music and what have you. The one that was just mentioned now, Pied Piper of Hamlin, we did, and um, I was not actually supposed to be in, but the fact that the star uh, that we had lined up uh, turned out not to, um, well, it was Perry Como, actually. And uh, I'm, I, I must tell the story correctly, even though it's, it's not a very nice thing to say, but uh, he promised to do the show for us, and we thought it would be the most marvelous thing in the world, and we could just see Perry playing the Pied Piper of Hamlin, singing all these wonderful songs, uh, but he must have, he okayed it and everything, but he must have gotten cold feet at the last moment, and at the last comment before they finally closed the door on the whole situation was that uh, he only had a few weeks vacation and that he was going to get his teeth fixed. <laughs> and it seemed rather odd that he would say okay and then decide that he had all these cavities. But in any, in any way, we, we had started the publicity campaign on it 
and there were really no names as yet because uh, up to that point we had planned on using uh, Perry Como's name and all of a sudden it was scratched by the dentist and uh, <laughs> we had to have some names going for us so then we had signed or were just about to sign Claude Rains and Lori Nelson and there were some names that were pending but they had not as yet inked themselves into the contract so somebody's name had to go somewhere so all of a sudden I found my name appearing um, <laughs> and because it appears you cannot say a so and so is going to appear and then if they don't appear they, you know the public can sue mm -hmm. where were they so I had to do a song in in the skit which I was going to do then uh, things got out of hand again and I ended up doing two or three but uh, actually I was not written into the show at all Claude Rains played uh, a very important part and we finally got Van Johnson to play the part of the Pied Piper of Hamlin and it turned out to be a very exciting fairy tale and I played the part of a crazy mother looking for her child <laughs> which <laughs> as my child says Ugh. That's typecasting. <laughs> oh, Kathy, now, now, now. Was a record made of this? Or? Well, uh, yes, there was a record made of some of these things. I think Flim Flam Flu was one of the How songs. How did it go? Did you, uh, you see, Richard said to me on the way over, he says, are you going to sing? Yes. I said, oh, no, I'm only going to visit. This is my fan club. And they've heard me sing a million times. So he just now he came to me and he says, oh, you're going to transcribe? And I said, well, yes. You know, he says, and you said you weren't going to sing. I said, well, I'm not. I'm just going to talk. And he says, uh-huh. Well, fine. Uh, and now you want me to sing. <laughs> oh, just for a thrill. No, actually, it's been released. <laughs> Uh, uh, we'll give you a copy. I'll figure something out. <laughs> I can't go back. I've, I've been so grand with Richard saying, well, of course not. I'm not going to sing. They've heard me sing a million times. Well, how did the word go? That was amazing. Well, actually, it was, uh, the scene was in a schoolroom with flim flam flu, flim flam flu, and all you have to do is do, and you believed in this thing, and he just waved a wand, and whatever the child thought was what happened. You see, if they believed in it, it's like, Wishing will make it so. It was that kind of a song, mm. but it was kind of a la di da thing. How did it go? Okay. I'm not asking you to sing. <laughs> <laughs> sing well. Did you see what? We were you very charming and sweet, you know, for the last week. We said, oh, all you great dramatic actors. <laughs> anyway, I think I'd say Lady Macbeth at the old victory. <laughs> that is neither here nor there. So we had all that, and I wouldn't want for a moment if you do anything you didn't want to, but you don't realize that really underneath this great thespian exterior, yeah. I'm just a fan of yours. Now just, uh, you wouldn't even tell us how it goes. Yeah. Maybe, uh, no, I mean, uh, not, not sing. I mean, I wouldn't ask you for him. Sing, sing, sing. Uh, <laughs> just sort of, uh, sort of, uh, you know, May I? <laughs> Richard. Yeah. All right, now now you're really bringing us down to the bare facts. <laughs> I don't remember how it goes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully, I just don't remember. I bet you did. Right, I don't. I didn't time. sing it mm -hmm. in the you play, so I don't remember. Nice. Not flim flam flu. No, it's no. just for a thrill. Well, we're talking. Oh. But now, do you know, maybe, <laughs> now, maybe <laughs> now I'll talk as a professional. Now, maybe Kay runs into contact difficulties. I don't know. You probably. No, 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 I don't. This is no. just for your personal. I know, yeah. but yeah. I don't know. I was opening the back door if you wanted to run out through it. If you don't want to run out through it, then you've got to sing this. Yeah. I don't know it. I do. Richard, Richard, I just don't know it. Listen, how many chances do I get to sing? I'm, I mean, sing. Most times you have somebody breathing down your neck saying, Moo! <laughs> oh, Kel, I'm quick to tell you. Oh, I wish you would. I naturally can't sing at all. We did this, this ridiculous thing with Kay, who was, as I say, really, this is true. She was so patient, so fabulous. I was like, I'll tell you. But we had to try and give a cod impression of somebody doing background noises in a quartet, you see, and I was going, mm -hmm. Like that. <laughs> and she suddenly turned around to me in rehearsal and burst out loud and she said, You look exactly like a car. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, really I didn't true. Say you look, I said, You sound like a car. He's going moo in my ear. <laughs> it was supposed to be the humming behind. <laughs> well, it was a form of humming, I suppose, behind, side by side. 
And when you when you see the show, uh, there will be only two faces humming behind me, but there's four voices doing it. <laughs> and I said, you know what's going to happen? If people are going to hear this, they're going to say, goodness, for two such wonderful actors, don't they get a lot of music out of just two people humming? <laughs> and all these voices behind doing the, doing the real humming, and these two are going... Mm. But, but they're making they're making the faces, but no noises. But at rehearsal, they were making the noises and the faces. <laughs> what made you make Christopher Robin a stay in his place? Well, it was kind of out of complete defiance, actually. Uh, I w had done it a long time ago on a show on ABC Network in the States, and um, for uh, at the Christmas uh, season, and I had loved it so. And it told such a dear story, and I, I just wanted to do it. it. It never sold. I guess I really didn't expect it to, and they told me it wouldn't, and when it didn't, nobody was surprised, except I, I just wanted to have it, I guess, on wax. Just one time that I could sing something that I wanted to sing, because so many times you get these people breathing down your neck saying, but really, this is what the people expect, and this is what they want, and this is what's going to go. And I, but, uh, but uh, don't you think, no, we're not supposed to think. We're supposed to go along with things, you see. And uh, it gets kind of hectic. You really somewhere. did want to do that. I on really your own personal behalf, wanted you? to do, mm -hmm. I wanted to do Christopher Robin, and I did it, but it just mm -hmm. didn't do anything for me in return. Mm -hmm. Did Bridge of Five get anywhere over there? I remember. Well, it did just fair. And it seems in the States they consider... Uh, if a, a record, a single, I shouldn't say an album, but a re if a single record sells 25,000 records, it's done well. Mm. And this just did fairly well. So that, that must mean a whole lot short of 25,000. It, or 200, fair. no, I'm sorry, 250,000. Because 250,000 is like, uh, what, a quarter of a million? Mm -hmm. This is very well. This must have done maybe 25, 40,000 at it the moment. It was a lovely recording, though, wasn't it? You know, it's very odd. It's so hard to tell who's going to like what. Now, you, all of you, <coughs> excuse me, all of you at different times have mentioned records that I've made over a period of time yeah. that um, I had forgotten and that had done nothing whatsoever in the States. But as I have explained here, uh, so many times an album will come out and the, the branch of the record company will take two sides out of an album, maybe two sides that I really didn't relish doing and really thought were the worst of the lot, but because they feel that the, either the English listeners or the French listeners, the Danish listeners, just whatever country might be involved in this particular situation, they pick out these songs, whichever ones they want, and they'll put them on uh, a single record and present it to the Which public. To, to that public yeah. Yes, but it's not always the one that I think's the best. And you have brought up some names of songs that I'd forgotten I even recorded because they did so hopelessly bad in the States that it's one of those things that you chose to disremember, mm -hmm. if there's any such word. But Kay, is there any way that, uh, uh, apart from your own rendering of it, or anybody else's rendering of it, have you got any theory of why a song which is intrinsically good gets buried for years and then suddenly comes up? I mean, in a sense, it, um, now, Ali Bozon is not buried, but I happen not to see the stage play, I happen to see the film, and I haven't heard, and I'm a great Cole Porter fan, naturally. Now, this obviously is a, is a wonderful number, now, you will probably bring it to the fore again, but it was good in the first place. Now, have you any idea why it didn't come out of a show? Rather like the one out of um, Gigi, you know, Say a Prayer for Me Tonight, yes, yes. which I think is a beautiful man. I don't know whether you do or not. I like it but it was never really an absolute. It wasn't the thing that people remembered from Gigi, and yet it creeps up almost quietly behind, yes. do you know? Yes. Do you know, as a musician, do you know why this thing happens? Well, I cannot speak as a musician, Richard. Well, I mean, I, to me, you are, uh, you know, I mean... Well, I, I, I just want to clarify the mm. fact that I don't read music. Uh, whatever I feel, music-wise, is just a feel, God-given, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I, I don't know 
one note actually from the other. Everything on the piano is hunt and peck. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're speaking about songs. Uh, the song Allez vous en was placed in the show after the show had been put on Broadway because they needed a song for a certain spot. Now, uh, when they did the motion picture, I was told, because I asked Frank Sinatra, who was the star of it, I said, Frank, you know, what happened to this song? It was the best song of the whole show, as far as I was concerned, because it had so much ingredients to it. And he said to me, well, it was not in the original score, and somehow there are so many, like you said, contractual sort of things that go on, and they didn't do it. Now, there's a, there is a show in, in New York uh, my daughter will have to help me on this. Um, Kathy, what is the one uh, that uh, about the young singer that plays the guitar? Bye Bye Birdie. Uh, Bye Bye Birdie. Then there's a song about... Um, I'm, I'm not too... Uh, the one that is so popular, the young girl just took it out of the show. Um, one Boy. One Boy. Do you, did you get that over no, here? No. One boy, one, only one boy, one boy to sit with, to laugh with, to kiss with, one boy, ba 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 ba. Well, this particular song was completely thrown away in the show, yet this little girl, inconsequential, a singer as on an inconsequential label, decided she'd do it. This is after the show had been so big and they had done the songs that they thought were the most popular out of it. She chose this song, did it, and it became one of the biggest songs in our North America. Mm -hmm. And there's just no telling. what no. Can, it, it seems that it's not really the song. It's either the timing or the rendition. I couldn't really tell you, Richard, mm. actually. No, no. I was asking this quite sincerely, you know, because I'm, I know. you know, I'm a great sort of uh, listener myself, and I just wonder about things, you know. Well, we'll have to pick up now, okay, because uh, Nina wants to oh. get you on her one. Nina never knew. <laughs> 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 well, I hope we've answered all your questions. Thank you very much. Richard Watters and I would like to say thank you very, very much. Right, Richard? Yes, certainly.